Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing some of the latest dies from Spellbinders to create a fun shaker clear bookmark. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Just yesterday, Spellbinders had a brand new release for April 2022, and one of the lines that they debuted are the new Color Block Mini Shapes. Now in front of me here, I have the triangles and the squares, but there are like teardrops and hexagons and circles. I'll put a picture up on screen now of all of the different shapes you can get. And guess what? If you want the bundle with all of the shapes, right now as I'm recording this, it is at a little bit of a discount. Now I will have the shapes that I share today linked in that description box below, as well as that bundle if you want to check those out. So each shape comes with two dies. One of them is just a larger solid shape, and the other one has concentric or nested of the same shape within it. So you can cut that solid, or you can cut like little frames with the other one. Now today I'll be using the triangles, and the solid is just a single piece. If you cut the one that has the nested dies in it, you can have four different sizes. With the square, you have the one solid, and then you have six different nested shapes within that other one. So these are a great way to get a variety of shapes and sizes by buying that bundle. And then you can make so many different types of cards. I know that if you search here on YouTube or over on Instagram for that color block mini shapes, I'm sure you're going to have lots of eye candy and inspiration. What I thought would be fun today was to use the triangle, so I'll be using the solid and the largest um, triangle here in the nested shape to create decoration for a bookmark. And I'm gonna be using some scraps of clear cardstock to adhere my pattern paper to and to kind of keep that bookmark a little bit more firm. Now you'll notice also here in front of me, I have some kind of odd things for maybe a paper crafting project. Over here on the left, I have these treat bags and these are just what you put like candy coated pretzels in. I like to use this to form like the opening for my bookmark when I do shaker bookmarks, but because these can kind of tear on the edges and they're pretty flimsy, not only do I like to add that clear cardstock inside for a little more stability, but I also laminate these pouches before you know I decorate the insides of them. So today I'll take you through that whole process and at the end of it, we'll have a fun bookmark that you can keep for yourself or give to a friend or family member. As I add any more products or tools later on in the video, I will be sure to let you know in that voiceover. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be using this letter size laminating pouch. It does take a heat laminator, and because it's larger than one snack bag, I'm going to go ahead and cut four down and laminate them just so that later I'll already have those bookmark blanks ready to go. Now, another thing I did was pre cut some white cardstock to two and an eighth inches wide by I think it's about eight inches tall. And this is just that I will put these inside of the cut down snack baggies, which I cut to eight inches tall, so that when I run that pouch through the laminator, it will not seal that pouch shut. This part is very important. Now, once I have those cardstock pieces inside of each of the snack baggies, I place these into the laminating pouch, and then off screen, I run them through my laminator. I I did just do the three mil on mine and it had been heating up for I would say 15 to 20 minutes. 
I almost forgot to mention that after I had those snack baggies in that laminating pouch, so I would remember which part was the opening or the top of those, I did get out a blue Sharpie marker and just put a dot at the top. This way later I'll always know which end is correct. If you've ever laminated anything before, you do know that after it's done, there's always kind of a little bubble around the piece where the lamination does not seal completely. You will want to make sure that when you go to cut out your bookmark blanks, that you cut just a little bit outside that bubble. This will just help it keep sealed and last longer. As I was cutting, I did make sure to remember which end was the open end of the snack pouch. And you'll see here that after I cut off the other three sides, I just cut right into where that white cardstock is. That way I can get in there with a little help from a pencil and pull out that white piece of cardstock. And now we have a nice laminated pouch ready to turn into a bookmark. Next, I got out a piece of 7 mil clear cardstock. If you've ever seen me make my clear cards, this is just a little bit thinner than the card bases I normally use. I cut two pieces that were 2 and an eighth inches wide by 7 and a half inches tall. To decorate the inside of the card, I got out this scrap of pattern paper I had. I liked how it kind of looked like rainbow watercolor or alcohol ink. And I'm going to be cutting from the solid triangle one out of each of those four sections. Then using the nested triangle, I'm going to cut the largest frame from that gold metallic paper. To hold the die in place while I send it through the die cutter, I am just using a small piece of the Scotch Blue Removable Tape, and I'll be able to reuse that as I cut all of the pieces. And speaking of that, here is a look at the pieces I did cut. You'll notice that I have one of each of the watercolor pieces, and then I also went ahead and cut the same amount of triangles in just white cardstock, so later that will hide the adhesive on the back of my patterns. Now I'm going to start decorating one of those clear pieces of cardstock that I cut earlier. I will temporarily tack this down to a scrap of grid paper I have. That way I can get the spacing and get everything nice and straight before I add the glue. I start with the bottom triangle or the frame one and I work up with each of my pieces. Now for now I do want a little extra clear on the top versus how much clear is on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead now and glue these to the clear cardstock. To do that I got out my art glitter glue in my fine tip bottle and I added adhesive to the back of each of the triangles. Now when I did this I did try to keep the glue toward the center of the triangle so when I pressed it down it did not you know kind of smoosh out from behind the triangle because I wanted to keep that cardstock nice and clear. Once I had everything placed on the front, I brought in those other die cut pieces from white cardstock and I adhered these behind the ones in the front. That again is just to hide the adhesive. Now once everything was in place, I did set this to the side for about 5 minutes to allow it to dry completely. While that was drying, I did go ahead and put together a little shaker mix for my bookmark. I chose some colors of the rainbow as well as some clear holographic tiny sequins. Now to keep the sequins from getting caught on those triangles so they'll shake nicely, I put that second piece of clear cardstock right on top of the first and then I slid these two pieces down into the bookmark. Now that everything was in place, I knew I needed to cut just a little bit off the top, so I brought in my little trimmer and did that quickly. And now I just poured in the sequin mix, making sure to get it in front of the top clear cardstock and not get any in behind it. I want to see all those shaker goodies. To make sure none of the sequins fall out of the top of the bookmark, I did seal the snack pouch to that top layer of clear cardstock. For this, I just used some liquid glue, and after letting it dry for about five minutes off screen, I did have to cut a little bit more off the top so that the piece of pattern paper that I cut and folded to decorate the top would cover up where that glue was. 
This piece of pattern paper was about one inch wide by two and a half inches tall and I just scored and folded that in half. Since it was a little bit too wide, I trimmed off the excess with some scissors and then I brought in my corner rounder to just add, yeah, just rounded corners to the top of that. To finish off my bookmark, I wanted to put some twine at the top and to do this, I punched a small hole with my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch. And then I got out the length of gold and white twine that I had here in my stash. And I tripled this up. Once I had that all cut, I folded it in half, tied a knot at the end, and fed this through my bookmark. Now that did take a little bit of getting that twisted just right to fit through the hole, but once I finally got it through there, I threaded the knot through the loop and tightened it. And at this point I realized that that was a little bit too long. To fix this, I cut another knot at more of a length I thought the twine should be. And then after I did that, I cut off the excess twine at the top. And here are some close-up looks at the finished bookmark. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's clear shaker bookmark. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.